the roadway and the available sidewalk. If you do so voluntarily, no charges will be placed against you. If you do so voluntarily, no charges will be placed against you. If you do so voluntarily, no charges will be placed against you. If you do so voluntarily, no charges will be placed against you. This fight has been going on for hundreds of years and I make sure they know that. You know, and this is just another step in the fight that now we now have to strap up our boots and come out here and fight. I have 44 years in this business. 44 years. And so I have learned that change don't come overnight. But I've learned that you have to be committed and you have to have courage and you have to have conviction for things that you believe in and you have to pursue them. Change come with heartbreaks, disappointments, and yes, we've had all those, but we still have not accomplished what we should accomplish in America, not just for African Americans, but for all Americans. I've been fighting this fight all my life, and now you have young people who's fighting the same fight, and the younger people seem to think like, it has to happen now. I haven't been to any of these marches, I'm tired of marching. I want a broader agenda. Now I need to see some systemic change that will make a real true difference. Really right now it's up for young people to keep moving forward and to push this movement and make sure that we have legislation that includes us. We want to make sure that legislation and policy is enacted not just on police reform but on education, healthcare system, housing, you know, the, the list goes on, but if we get lost in the pictures and the videos and just being a part of a march with a pretty sign, we forget that there's real people living lives in Brooklyn right here, still dealing with issues. And I'll tell you that from my personal experiences, we don't grow up thinking that our voice matters or that our, our pain and our struggle matters. You know, they say, um, closed mouths don't get fed. And that's why we're here out today with these protesters, because they're tired of not being fed equality and equity and justice. The different in the movement this time is that you've seen a lot of different races involved. During Dr. King time and my early protests, it was mostly African Americans. And as people watched that videotape, people were sitting in their homes and they said, enough is enough and they walked out of their doors, black, white, Asian, whatever it was, to join in and say enough is enough. I think that what's going on with the marches is excellent, but I have some legislation that I would like to see initiated. And I've been working with a group of young people and we're presenting our agenda items to people who can help us to get that pushed through. I think that the generational portion of this movement is important to its sustainability. Because if it was only people like our parents coming out here and marching, that wouldn't last for long. But because you have younger kids that are able to see what's going on and to see that this is a problem in our society and they need to also be a part of the change, I think that that shows a great sign. My great grandfather, who was an immigrant from Jamaica, you know, just trying to make it, but knew that this was a place that he needed to be because they were people who looked like him and he wanted to fight for his future generations. He marched with Martin Luther King for me. For the young people who are protesting today, that's right. But I don't want you just to protest. I want you to vote. So yes, young people, take the baton, run with it, be ready to pass it on to the next generation with pride.